In this video, we're going to look at the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Uh, so our weak acid in this case is going to be our sample in our flask. And our strong base is going to be our titrant. You'll notice in our flask, we have an indicator as seen by this kind of pink color changing at the top. Uh, we'll look at an example of what the indicator could be on our next slide. So we are going to look at the titration of 10 milliliters of acetic acid, CH3COOH, with uh, 0.1 molar NaOH. So uh, when we write our net ionic equation, uh, we're going to start with our acetic acid. It's a weak acid, so it won't ionize completely in water. And so we're going to have the acetic acid intact present. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. It will dissociate into sodium ions, which are spectators, and hydroxide ions. Because we have a strong base being added, this will be a quantitative reaction forming acetate and water. So we're going to walk through this titration curve. We're going to look at what species are present at various points on the curve uh, and how that affects the pH. So we're going to start right at the beginning of the curve. So this is before any of our titrant NaOH is added. Our, our pH is 2.8-ish uh, uh, here. Um, and if we... Uh, were to look in the flask and examine what's in the flask here, we would see that we have um, unionized acetic acid and water as our two primary species present at this point. Uh, we haven't added any NaOH yet. Next, we're going to see this kind of uptick in our titration curve. This occurs when we start to convert some of the acetic acid into acetate. So we react some of the acetic acid away, and then we see a leveling off. And that leveling off is centered right around our half equivalence point. That half equivalence point is where the concentration of the acetic acid that we've started with is equal to the concentration of acetate that forms during the reaction. And that's because we've used up exactly half of the moles of acetic acid we started with. At our half equivalence point, the species present in our flask will then be acetic acid, acetate, water, and sodium from our sodium hydroxide. This region around our half equivalence point, where our pH flattens back out, this is called our buffer zone. And so as we add more base, because we have conjugates present, some of that base is going to react with the acetic acid and form acetate. That's going to flatten out this pH. It's going to resist a change in pH for a little bit. As we continue to add more base, we start to react up all of the acetic acid present, and we see this slightly sharper change in pH. So it's not as sharp as we would expect for a strong acid, strong base titration, but still sharper than what's present on the rest of the graph. And so that change in pH uh, is centered right around our equivalence point. So at our equivalence point, we have added uh, equal moles of NaOH as we started with acetic acid. So at our equivalence point, the only species that are present are going to be our conjugate base, CH3COO minus acetate. We're going to have water, and we're going to have sodium ions from our sodium hydroxide. Because acetate is present, this is a weak base. Because it's present, this is going to drive the pH above 7. The pH here is approximately 8.8, but the pH will always be above 7 when we start with a weak acid, uh, 
because at our equivalence point, we're always going to have the conjugate weak base present. As we continue to add more um, hydroxide, that's going to go unreacted. So we just start to add more hydroxide. Um, and what we see is we still have our acetate present in our solution. But because there's nothing else for our sodium hydroxide to react with, we're just going to have unreacted hydroxide ions. That's going to push this pH higher until it approximately equals the pH of our titrant, which is around 13. Um, so that's what's present at each point in our graph. We can decide what, what indicator we want to use by looking at the pH of our equivalence point. So our equivalence point is around a pH of close to 9. Uh, so we want an indicator that's going to change color close to 9. And if we look at our uh, indicator table, we see that phenolphthalein changes from uh, colorless to pink. Sorry, colorless to the very light pink from 8 to uh, 10. And then it's going to change from uh, light pink to a darker pink uh, right around a pH of 10. And so for our end point here, we would be aiming for this change to the light pink. So when we're looking at a titration curve of a weak acid and weak base, there's two things we're going to look for. We're going to look for an initial low pH followed uh, that has a slight uptick at the beginning and then a flattening out area. And then we're going to look for an equivalence point above 7. So those two things together will tell us that we have a weak acid being titrated with a strong base.